Hello everyone, hope you're doing good. Welcome to my February 2023 rankings. Just want to get this off my chest now. Not all of these movies are from last month, or not all of them are from this year as a whole. I just thought I'd mix the list up a bit of all the films that I've seen for the first time this year, in that month. Just to make it a bit more interesting. So, if you see a film all the way back from 2015 or 14, it's because of that. So without further ado, let's just go straight into this. So at number 9, we have Shotgun Wedding. The film starring Jennifer Lopez. And it's terrible. The only really good thing that this movie did was inspire this video, which I feel you should check out, because I really think that video is fantastic. Not enough people have seen it. But yeah, apart from the romance in the film, and probably one joke that got a little chuckle out of me, this film was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. It felt like it was just rehashing the tropes of an early 2000s comedy with a twist villain that is so obvious from the start. As soon as that character is introduced, you say, that's the villain. The comedy is just so unfunny as well. Things don't make any sense. <sighs> Things just happen for no reason as well. There is so much to hate about this movie. Characters as well. Some characters are so annoying, so unlikable. There is nothing to enjoy about this movie at all. Apart from the romance, that is all this movie has going for. So, Shotgun Wedding, bottom of the list, easily. Worst film of 2023 so far. And number 8 is a film called Infinite. Now, this film had its network premiere a couple of weeks ago. So I thought I'd go and watch it. It's a 2021 film, straight to streaming, starring Mark Wahlberg. And it's terrible. The concept is actually really interesting. This race of humans who, when they die, they get reborn in different lives, different times. That's a cool concept. But the thing is, is that this movie just uses it so thinly and just uses it to make it a generic action movie. You know, like those Bruce Willis straight to DVD movies... That is what this film feels like. Drawn out, cliche, nothing inspiring. The only thing that was actually interesting about this movie was Chiwetel Ejiofor, who plays the villain. Because he was hamming his acting up to 11. He was so funny in the role that I feel he did that on purpose just to make something about this movie entertaining. But apart from that, the story's bland, Characters are bland, the villain is so goofy, which would work if this film wasn't taking itself so seriously. And I feel like Chiwetel was the only person that actually knew that was a good thing to do. The acting is really bad, Mark Wahlberg could not look more bored in the role. That That is all this movie is really. A generic action movie with an interesting concept, which they never use to their advantage. So Infinite, I cannot suggest to anyone, it's a terrible action movie. And number seven is a movie called When You Finish Saving the World. Quick review of this series, I've already reviewed it. It's got some really good performances. I really do like the ending. I feel that's a very good on-the-nose ending that works well. But the film's characters are just so unlikable. Why is the main character telling his friends to always F off? There's no reason for that. The story could be interesting, but the thing is, it's not developed well, thanks to the unlikable characters. Some of the music is really annoying. They play out like this weird techno music, and it just never sat well with me, unfortunately. Overall, when you finish saving the world, has an interesting story, not written well, unfortunately, has very unlikable characters, and it has quite low stakes, really. Like... I feel like there could have been more stakes if it was written a bit better. If, if something little was changed in the script, I felt this movie could have been pretty good a little bit more. But as of now, when you finish saving the world, it was quite boring. And it was a struggle to get through, really, unfortunately. And it's a shame, because I can see a good movie in this. Just needed to be written better. And number six is Cocaine Bear. Just going to rush through this one, because it was my last video when I reviewed it. It's ridiculous, it's dumb, it's a B-movie, you can have fun with it. Take your friends to see this, get some popcorn, get some drinks, enjoy it. It is corny, 
It is funny. I would have liked a bit more of that corny stuff instead of focusing on these bland flipping characters. But it was still a lot of fun. So Cocaine Bear, quick review of that. Just go watch it if you want to. It's enjoyable. It's bad. But that's all I expected it to be. And number five is Empire of Light. Sam Mendes' new film. And I was so disappointed in this. I was so excited to see this film. I love Sam Mendes. He's made my favourite James Bond film, Skyfall. And while I can tell what he was doing, and the movie did have some interesting stuff in there, there was too much interesting stuff. So much of this movie could have been cut out, leaving you more free time to develop the more interesting stuff. But instead, he kept all that in, and we have a muddled mess with no clear storyline. The acting though is really good. Olivia Coleman really does knock it out of the park in this. I thought she was fantastic. I thought she has fantastic chemistry with the other actors, especially for the robots, which I thought was done fairly well as well. There's an entire scene where she has having like a schizophrenia attack. I really like that scene. I thought she acted that perfectly. But fortunately, it's bogged down by an oversuffed script that has no idea what it wants to do. It wants to do so many things that it has no clear focus. And that's why this film feels like a range of events instead of a clear story beginning to end. And number four is Knock at the Cabin. This was a very solid M. Night Shyamalan movie. As I said in my review of this, you never know what you're going to get with Shyamalan movies. And this one was kind of just above the middle for me. It has an interesting concept about these people who have to kill one of their family members to save the entire world. And, and the movie does a great job at developing that. But unfortunately, this movie's ending was far too safe. I looked at the book ending, which was really dark, but ambitious. And I don't know, what. while it would have been really flipping dark and shocking for this film, I would have preferred it, unfortunately, instead of this safe ending. But the movie does have some good messages and themes about what will it take for you to believe? Will it be too late for you to believe in something? And that just really keeps the tension going. Even in the quiet scenes, the tension is still there. It's also held by some fantastic performances. Dave Bautista gives one of his best performances yet, apart from Drax in the MCU. So overall, M. Night Shyamalan really kind of knocked it out of the park here. But fortunately, I think what happened was the criticism of old with the twist ending made him too afraid to do a twist ending with this one. And in this case, I think a twist ending would have been the better, the better case with this. But overall, it's a solid film, which I would not be, you know, not be hard to watch again. I fully enjoyed it for the most part. And number three is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, the most divisive, one of the worst reviewed MCU films to date. I didn't think it was that bad. In fact, I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was quite solid. But as I said, it felt more like a feature length trailer for the future of the MCU they try to tell a compelling story. The plot is so thin, so razor thin. But I still have fun with it. And it has made me excited for the future of the MCU. Thanks to the likes of Kang, Jonathan Majors knocking it out of the part. I can't wait to see him in the future of the MCU. Paul Wood again, he's great as Ant-Man. I don't really think I need to say any more about that. I thought the fire lap was fantastic. Modoc, I think, looked awful. But... He was used well as comedic relief. He's a comedic character. You can't take a thing like that seriously. So I respect that they went that way with his character. But as I said, it's more of just a trailer. It's not really a compelling story. I do think it's the best Ant-Man film, but that's not really a high bar to reach, in my opinion. I don't think the first two are that great. So overall, Quantumania has made me super excited for the MCU in the future. I just wish, though, it told a really good story. Instead of just feeling like a trailer. At number two, our runner-up is a film called Skinnamarink. A new analog horror movie. Which I had no expectations for. And boy was I scared. <laughs> I, I would highly suggest watching this with the lights completely off in the dark. Watching it with some headphones. Because it just makes the experience so much better. This film has pretty much no plot. Apart from the fact that two siblings are trapped in a house where their parents are missing. 
the doors and windows have vanished, and there's this weird entity, you know, torturing them. And some gruesome stuff happens in this. And while we don't really see the kids' faces at all, and while we don't really see the blood and gore and all the terrible stuff that happens, it's still implied by the fantastic sound design. The sound, the audio, is intentionally bad, and it somehow just makes this movie more scary. There's only around four jump scares in this film, and they are all super effective. I did not see them coming at all. The, this movie is just creepy the whole way through, because most of it is just silent. It's just shots of doors, shots of windows. And while I do think the movie lasted a bit too long, I felt under about 20 minutes could have been cut out. I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Still thought it was incredibly scary, but experimental as well. And despite its very thin story, a very weird ending that kind of makes no sense, I don't know, I, I think it worked in this movie's favour. Sometimes answers aren't scary. And I think that uses it to its advantage. So, Skin of a Ring, my second favourite movie of the month. I, I would highly suggest watching this movie when you can, 100%. But my number one film is not a 2023 film, but it's Hacksaw Ridge. I never saw this film until a few weeks ago, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought this was a fantastic movie based on a true story about Desmond Doss, a Christian back in World War II who refused to pick up a gun, decided to become a medic, and saved about 75 people's lives during Hacksaw Ridge. Absolutely fantastic story, fantastic man and inspiration and it honours him, not just him but the fallen soldiers as well, the people in that war, in that battle, but it also makes that war so bloody and so hard to watch. If Saving Private Ryan was bloody and hard to watch, wait till you watch this. I think this is more gruesome than that film, no matter how much I love Saving Private Ryan. That this film looks so real with its war scenes. I, I'm not really a guy who gets affected by blood and gore, really, but even I was a bit ooh. And it, it's scary. It's re it really is scary to see what it was like back in that time. But the film also does a good job at giving everyone character, not just our main character Desmond Doss, but all the other soldiers as well. You know, we 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 all kind of care for them. Whenever one of them dies, we you know we feel a bit sad about it. But the film's helmed by some fantastic performances. Andrew Garfield is fantastic in this. His accent was spot on as well. I think Vince Vaughn was really good in this as well. Sam Worthington didn't really do much in the film, but for what he did, I thought he did a good job as well. The romance is likeable, even though I do feel it was a bit rushed at times. But overall, Hacksaw Ridge is a very emotional war story filled with great characters really hard to watch war scenes but they do help the story it's an emotional ride about a true man who kept to his beliefs refused to pick up any weapons and just save people trying to put little pieces of greatness back into the world and i love that he's an inspiration he's a lifesaver and i felt this story really honored him and the fallen soldiers so if you haven't got the chance to watch anything else or do anything else Watch Hacksaw Ridge, please. I think this is a very good war film, and I feel it should be talked about more, especially these days, years after it's been released. So Hacksaw Ridge is the best film I've seen this month. And guys, that is it for the end of this ranking. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know what you think of any of these films in the comments. Let me know what your favourite film of the month was. I always like to hear your opinions, people. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a good day. See you later.